Hi everyone. I have two lightsaber hilts uh, by Roman Props to look at today. Um, the first one is the MK1, which is um, Obi-Wan Kenobi's lightsaber in uh, Star Wars A New Hope. And the other one is the Inception Elite, which is Obi-Wan Kenobi's lightsaber from Revenge of the Sith. So let's start with the MK1. This is obviously a replica. None of these parts are vintage, unfortunately. <laughs> vintage parts are hard to find and very expensive, but perhaps one day. Uh, but as far as replicas go, the Roman Props MK1 is without a doubt the best a replica of um, that particular lightsaber. Um, it is very, very true to the uh, vintage. Um, you know, all the parts match it perfectly in dimension, in, in weight, in heft, in finish. It's an absolutely gorgeous hilt to own. And I would strongly recommend any fans of the original Obi-Wan Kenobi lightsaber to um, look no further than Roman props. Um, so a little bit of just a brief history about this prop. Uh, when they made it in the 70s, they used uh, real world parts. So the emitter, they used a Rolls-Royce um, balance pipe. And then for the uh, neck and midsection here, it's actually a uh, World War I uh, grenade, the MK1 grenade. And then they use the Graflex uh, flash camera uh, clamp for here in the midsection, just like Luke Skywalker's lightsaber. That same um, brand of cameras. And then uh, for the bubble strip, they used um, the Xactra calculator, same as Luke. I don't know where these transistors came from, but again, all real world parts. Uh, this booster section here was again some World War I um, machine gun part. And finally this, uh, the pommel was made from a, um, a tap, basically, uh, a, a bathroom tap. You can see it looks like a, like a faucet. It even says C, cold for cold. Uh, an Armitage Shanks, which is a British uh, company that makes um, bathroom things like taps and so on, and a D-ring. So yeah, this is a excellent lightsaber hilt, and uh, I have added a lot of weathering just to make it look a little bit more aged, um, just to kind of give it a bit of a more of an aged finish. Here I added some rust in between the grenade grooves. Some of it is natural rust. I set it out in the rain. Uh, some of it was paint. Some of it is Tamiya rust. Just a combination of things. Um, same as with the clamp, I used a lot of um, paint and Tamiya uh, suit, I think, I used. And then I covered it with uh, the foil tape here because that's how it appears in the reference pictures. There and there on this side. And that's it for the MK1. The Inception is, as I said, it's from Revenge of the Sith. And uh, they wanted to basically uh, at that point in the prequels, they did not use any real world parts. They uh, machined everything from new, uh, but they wanted it to obviously resemble because in continuity, I mean, it's meant to be the same saber that Obi-Wan Kenobi has in Revenge of the Sith and then years later in A New Hope, it's the same hilt pretty much. So um, they, they matched it as best as they can. Um, this is much slimmer, much lighter. It's much easier to swing around. If I were to install one, I think it would be this one. It's just a lot easier to handle. Um, obviously, you can see the main difference is it's a very shiny chrome finish um, in the uh, emitter part, the midsection, and the pommel. Um, the 
grenade and the booster are more of a gloss black finish anodizing. Um, the thin neck here, it's uh, copper and brass. The control box looks completely different. Over here, obviously, we have the bubble strip. Over here, we have a uh, kind of a gold circuit card. And then over here, instead of these two transistors, we have these two Greeblies, and it doesn't say graphics or anything. Um, yeah, again, booster looks slightly different. It's more kind of flat profiled. And uh, it's got the uh, cover tech wheel, which is typical of the prequel hilts, as opposed to a D-ring or belt attachment. And then the machined uh, um, sink knob um, replica. Uh, so yeah, I mean, design-wise, this is probably easier to handle, it's lighter in weight, it's easier to kind of swing around. This one, even though it's hollow from here, because it's the FX version that's install installable, it's still very heavy. It's still got a lot of weight and heft to it. So, uh, but obviously this is much more iconic. Um, this one is my personal favorite just because there's so much history behind this hilt and it just looks really, really good aged and weathered like this. But I still love this one too. Um, I think this is really beautiful and elegant as well. I really like all these different kind of black chrome, um, you know, a little bit of brass, a bit of copper in it. It's, it's very Obi-Wan, isn't it? it? It looks great. Um, this is really nice for like a cosplay, I think, as well. Um, so yeah, it's nice to kind of have both. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's my take on these. Both are excellent. Uh, unfortunately, the Inception is now discontinued. At least that's what it says on the website. I mean, I was lucky enough to nab this a couple of months ago uh, when there was just a few left in stock but that's it i mean it says retired now on it it doesn't even it doesn't say out of stock it says retired as of now november 2021 so i hope um that roman decides to make another run just because this is a very popular hilt and i'd like more people to be able to get their hands on it if they've missed out um, but the MK1 is still available, and in fact, this is an older run from a couple of years ago. He has a newer run, which is almost exactly the same, but it's just got a few more details, like he's got some stamping here on the wind vane and just a couple of other tiny, tiny modifications he's made to it. Um, so the MK1 is available. The Inception Elite, as of now, is not available. Um, but yeah. Both of them are great. Uh, I hope you enjoy this review. Uh, feel free to um, leave a comment. Um, any questions you have, if I can help out, I'd be happy to do so. And till the next time, may the force be with you.